Hello, welcome. So tonight we're going to be filling in the flight feathers. With basically just a combination of warm and cold grays. And maybe a little bit, um, especially towards this area here, of like an ivory white color, which is sort of an off-white color. Um, so just a review from last time. We have four emarginated primaries here, which means they have this little dip in the side here on the trailing edge of the feather. And the rest of them, you know, as you get to this one here, it starts to get more of a uniform um, trailing edge to the feather. And then especially as you come around this curve here, the trailing edge is pretty straight. And then into the secondaries. Um, so a review that most birds have 10 primary feathers. We sketched those out last week, the, the outlines. And then typically they'll have like between 12 and 16 or so secondaries, which are the feathers that are coming um, out of this part of the wing. Think of it as like an arm, you know. Um, there's this outer part which is, has the primaries and then the secondaries are on the inner part closer to the body. So, um, yeah, that's all we're really going to be doing today is working on these feathers, so we have quite a bit of time to do that. Um, you know, we'll just do a, a few primaries and a few secondaries, so I'll have a pretty in-depth opportunity to talk about that, since that's all we have left in our drawings. If you think of any questions throughout, feel free to put them into the comments, or if you have any other feedback. Um, so we'll start, typically I like to start with the outer primaries and then work my way in. That's just uh, my preferred way of doing it, basically. But, you know, you can, you can do it the opposite direction if you want in your other drawings. But. So in particular, for these, let me take a look at the photo. For the first four, these emarginated primaries... If you're looking at the photo, you'll notice that there's quite an ivory tone to the feathers here. And then once you get in a little further, they have more of a grayish tone. And that's a combination of both like the actual feather pigment and the shadow that's going on here. Um, the, the feathers are in a little bit of shadow, as you can see if you're looking at your photo. <laughs> And yeah, I also outlined in the other wing, and I, I filled in these underwing coverts as well since last time. Um, but if you have any questions about outlining these feathers or doing these underwing coverts, feel free to let me know. Otherwise, I'm just going to start putting a base layer of ivory here. So it's kind of just this part that bulges out of the feather that you can color in ivory. And then once you get up to here, we're gonna start using grays. And when you're looking at a bird's feathers, you know, it's kind of hard to tell, at least for me with this photo, um, exactly which feathers are old versus new. Um, older feathers are gonna have more of a brown appearance and new ones are gonna have more of a gray appearance as far as molt goes. Uh, it's been seven years since I banded raptors, but you know, if an experienced bander were to look at this photo, they might be able to tell, especially if you zoom in. Um, but yeah, a lot of these feathers, to me, look fairly new. They have kind of a grayish appearance to them. And then the other thing, of course, that you'll want to include when you're sketching in your feathers is the feather shaft, if you can see it. And on this outer feather here, you have kind of a yellowish tinge to that. So you can use like a cream, like this color here, and get it pretty sharp. Whenever you're drawing in the shaft of the feather, you should have your pencil really sharp, especially if you're drawing on a scale where it's 
going to be a really thin line. And you can smooth out that ivory over the top with a white. I'm going to just use this luminance white pencil to smooth it out a little. And of course, lighter colors like that, you probably can't even barely see what I'm doing, but hopefully you can still understand the tips that I'm talking about. And then I'm going to take, let's see, warm, some of the darker warm grays. So like a warm gray 5 first, and then I'll go over the top of it with a warm gray 6. And just do this, the tip of the feather here. And just shade that whole thing in, going from, you know bottom to to tip of feather going in the direction that the barbs would be in basically and using pretty light pressure because we're doing our lighter color first and then we're gonna go over top of it with the darker warm gray so as you get to the end of the feather here it's important to look at the shape and make sure that you get the shape pretty much what you see here. So you've got this really pointed end. And then it kind of comes around on the other side of the feather shaft here. I'll try to zoom in a little bit. It's always a balance. I don't want to zoom in too far because then it gets blurry. Tries to do silly things like focusing on my hand when I don't want. But yeah, in particular, like these last few emarginated primaries, you want to really focus on the shape and also the distance between like this end of the feather and this next one. And things like overlap. Like, you'll notice the trailing edge is overlapping the leading edge of that next feather. Because getting things like that right is what's going to um, piece together. It's like puzzle pieces and get that whole wing together looking how you want it. And looking like a red tail wing shape. So then you can take a darker, like a warm gray six. The darkest warm gray that you have. And put in some of the darker areas. Like in, in particular at the very tip of the feather. When you get further down here it's definitely lighter. And you can blend that together. Using warm gray too. That's a really nice one for smoothing out colors and blending them a bit. And you can sort of see where the feather shaft is there. But you can work to outline it a bit more using like your warm gray 5. You can also do a bit more lightly as you come down here. And then we can start adding in some of the barring. Use like an ivory to smooth out the transition from dark to light here. And then for the barring, I'm going to use a little bit of a lighter warm gray. Warm gray 4. Some of these are getting pretty small. I'll need to put them in pencil extender. And you can count, you know, how many you've got there. It looks like three and three and a half, kind of. And then look at the angle, too, of those. They're kind of angled up a little bit. And they're lighter on this trailing edge and then darker on the leading edge. 
And oftentimes when you're drawing feathers like this, you can see the other feather showing through underneath. So if you look real closely at your photo, you'll notice like you can sort of see the feather shaft of this one through there. And it's not like a majorly noticeable thing here because of the lighting. It's um shadowy kind of lighting. But if you had a bird where the feathers, it was kind of reaching its wing forward and it was backlit, and like there's lighting behind, then you may really be able to see through that a lot more. For example, the great horned owl that I just finished a little while ago is definitely like that. At least in part. Um, but yeah, you can see a hint of that feather behind there. So yeah, don't be afraid to darken up areas that are dark here. You might even want to put a little bit of black. But overall, looking at this, it's pretty warm tones. It's like brownish grays. So we're mostly going to be using warm grays for a lot of these feathers. Um, so the next one is is really the same deal. But you may want to take, um, there's one spot where it really does look brown. So you can take something like a nougat neutral kind of light brown. And you can see if you're looking at your photo where that brown is and add some brown in here. And you know, this particular class is going to be kind of a lot of the same, but that will allow us to talk about some of the smaller nuances and things without feeling rushed. And also, you know, if you're watching this live, or if you're not watching this live, um, if you have any random comments or questions about really anything, it doesn't even have to be this drawing. It can be anything related to drawing. Feel free to put them in the chat. So we have, yeah, I'll use the warm gray five here to blend this transition between the gray and the brown. But leaving isolated this line to it's a little more brownish where the feather shaft is. <laughs> and sometimes you'll see he's like some dark sepia also. Kind of more defined lines. Maybe where there's sort of a ripple in the feather. So we've got that. Now we can do the ivory again for this part. And then you have these really subtle bars here. There's like, let's see, three and a half of them kind of here. I 
And when you're doing these kinds of bars, pay attention to the width of them and the angle and, you know, whether you've got some parts that are kind of wider than others, maybe have a little bit of a scribbly appearance to that bar. It's going to vary depending on the bird, depending on the species and the individual. And of course, with red tails, they have so much variation. Not so much in the, in the flight feathers as in, you know, the coloration on their underside, but sometimes, sometimes flight feather variation too. A little bit. But you know, sometimes you'll have birds where they have a darker color of the middle of the bar and then they have like a lighter color on the outside of that maybe, for example. Depends. Um, yeah, I guess we'll do one more and then maybe we'll do some of these other ones because they have a different coloration than the outer four. Oh, you know, I am noticing actually now, now that I look more closely. These outer two definitely look to me like they're older feathers. They've got more of a brownish appearance. And then when you get in here to these two, they're definitely darker. So you've got more of like a bluish gray going on, which means they're newer feathers. Um, so for that, I would use Payne's gray for some of these darkest areas, which is like a dark bluish gray. Or if you don't have that, you can always use like a cold gray six. Let's see, this is definitely a little bit longer than I made it. So let's go up here. You really want to look at where is that little turn here at the edge of the feather. Sometimes it can be helpful to just outline some of this darker area. And then add in your gray. And you'll notice if you're using Payne's gray, it might be hard to see it here, but it's got a bluer tone, especially compared to the warm gray six. And a lot of times too, when you're drawing a newer feather versus an older one, um, sometimes the older feathers will look a little bit more disheveled. It's not really the case with this bird. But sometimes you'll have just like subtle things like a little gap in between the barbs maybe. And then you can use a little bit of a lighter like cold gray, like a cold gray four maybe for this area. And then you'll see a little bit of barring extending up into this dark area too. Use ivory again for this lower part. And this is a really good way to learn about molt. Look closely at which feathers look old and which look new to you. And then later you can do some outside research and if you want to keep a separate sheet off to the side on which feathers are old and which are new, you can just have the outlines and put like an O or an N on your feathers. And if you really are a bird nerd or a bander, you can look in the pile guide, which is a reference guide for banders, P-Y-L-E. 
try and figure out what age that bird is. Or you can do some research on sites like, for example, Hawkwatch International that could have information that's available mm -hmm. online. Put a little bit of an outline to that trailing edge too if you want. Use a little bit of a lighter cold gray. And then I'm switching back to like a warm gray five for these bars. And also pay attention to how your barring lines up or doesn't line up. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes you'll see that the barring lines up on your feather. Um, like with, with the next feather over. And then I'm smoothing out the transition between dark and light with an ivory. And you can go into this area here with like your Payne's gray and put some of these darker bars. And sometimes the bars will have almost like an S shape to them, a slight curvature. These ones kind of do, but it's really subtle. And another thing sometimes you'll notice is that there's a little sliver of light um, coloration at the end of your feather. It's hard to see in this photo. Um, couple of the feathers are cut off. I really don't think there is much of that going on, but on one of them you have like a little teeny light dot, which you can either leave isolated or you can just take an eraser in and add, add in that light spot. Also, if you have any really dark areas, it can be nice to take a dark indigo like up here. If you have some a newer feather, like this one here, and you want to get that bluish gray tone emphasized, just using light pressure. Maybe going over the top with the Payne's gray. I like doing stuff like this because although, you know, to an extent it's a little bit repetitive, it just becomes kind of like a meditative sort of thing. And you'll notice the small differences between various feathers too. And then you might notice something like, oh, I want to up the contrast between this ivory white and then um, these underwing coverts here. So you can take like maybe the Payne's gray and darken these up a little bit, especially the ends of those feathers. But now let's move on um, to some of the other feathers just to show, because this one is pretty similar to the one next to it. But then when you get over to here, we're starting to have some more gray 
going on like in this lower area so a thing that can be helpful if you're looking at a photo is if you're looking at it on the computer just have like a pointer um, have the pointer on your computer in line with the feather that you're working on and if you're looking at a printout then you can just take um, like a pencil or something and point at the feather that you're working on just so that you don't lose your place. It's just a helpful reminder. So again, with this um, fifth feather here, you do have a little yellowish coloration to the shaft of the feather that you can add in. <coughs> Excuse me. But then we're going to take, we'll start kind of light with like a cold gray three and add that in this area just using light pressure because you'll notice that there's some more sort of silvery gray going on here. And with some of the feathers, you'll see even a little bit of reflected light. And where you see that, where it looks really light in some spots and darker in others, we'll talk about that more in a bit because this feather doesn't really show it. But when that happens, you can use your eraser to emphasize the contrast if you need to. But it's nice to start light and then go over the top darker too. Have a light base layer at first. So you can smooth out like this area with a white pencil. And then as you get up a little further, again, this feather looks to me like it's new, but you do have a little bit of a brownish tone and I think it's from the feather that's underneath it actually. So it's pretty subtle, but you can use like nougat to show that little bit of brown very lightly and then as we get up towards the end of the feather um you can use i would actually mix a combination of warm gray six just as a light layer and then Payne's gray Oh, you're saying that because I sneezed. Thanks, Kevin. <laughs> so then just use this lightly first, and then a bit darker with the Payne's gray. And I only skipped this feather again because it's like really similar to that one. So I'm trying to focus on feathers that look different from each other because feathers that look similar you can just work on on your own time. Rather than watching me draw for hours. <laughs> So on this particular feather, oftentimes this is true of the, the fifth feather across here where it looks like it's almost emarginated, but not quite. You've got just a little bit of a dip here. And then it comes around like this. And try to keep... Um, this line really thin here. It's actually, you know, at the end of the feather, can't really see it at all. And then it gets wider as you go down the feather, which is typical. And then if you want to erase in that little end that's really light, you can use an eraser. <laughs> And then maybe um, the light gray. Mm. 
maybe a detail that's too subtle to show, but I think you know what I'm talking about. Just that little tiny spot of light on the end. I wish you could film an HD on here, and I don't think you can, because what happens is when I'm done with Facebook Live, it says upload an HD, and I click yes. So, if there's things that don't show up as well live, they might show up better in the, in the recording. It's hard to say because, you know, when I'm looking at this, it's hard for me to tell exactly how good the quality is because it's on my phone screen, which is pretty small. And I tried doing filming like this with a webcam, but I actually found that the phone quality was better than the webcam. Because my dad uses a webcam sometimes for things. But phones these days, smartphones have really good quality. So again, you can look at um, the number of bands that you see here. And I'm seeing about five one, two, three, that are well defined. There's one that's kind of fading and fading into the dark area here that you can kind of outline. And these are fairly thick bands. I could use like, let's see, warm gray five for these. They've got a little bit of a jagged appearance. Meaning they kind of go up and down a little bit in spots. So there we go. Um, what I usually do with bands is I just do like the base lightest layer and then I'll take darker colors over the top like the Payne's Gray to darken in some spots. Like I notice on this feather that it's darker as you get near the feather shaft. And again if you want to blend it with that other color you can just go over the top with something like a warm gray too to blend it a bit. And sometimes you'll have a little bit of um, maybe contrast that you want to show between this darker part here and then this next lighter feather. Sometimes there will be a little bit more shadow on this edge compared to here too, which you may want to show. It's going to look very contrasted now because I didn't fill this one in yet. But if you look at the photo, you'll see that there is quite a bit of contrast there. And it's a little bit darker here compared to the, the edge here. All right. And then this next feather here, if you're looking at the photo, you'll notice there is a spot where the barbs have separated, which you can include in if you want. I'm not going to, though. I'm just going to leave it smooth. But, you know, if you wanted to show that, it's really just you leave a triangle there and try to, to replicate the angle. But when birds have kind of disheveled feathers, I like to leave that out and just make it look smooth for the most part. Sometimes there can be small imperfections you might want to include though. And if you're looking at a raptor that has a lot of that going on, um, it could be it has a, like some molt or a few funky feathers that are older.
Or it could be a, a falconry bird. Sometimes they'll have more feathers like that. If they have too many feathers like that, it's a sign that it's not a healthy bird, which is not good. But Occasionally, falconry birds will have just a few feathers that look kind of disheveled in appearance. Oh, and now I'm using... Um, I'm going to use a combination of light warm gray 2 and a little bit of the cold gray. Use like a cold gray 2 or 3. This is 3. This appears to be an old feather, so... Can actually do three layers. So the warm gray first, a little bit of cold gray, and then warm gray again over the top. Old feathers are gonna have more warm rather than cool tones. So, you know, three layers will make sure to get it looking nice and smooth, which is good, especially for flight feathers. You want it to look nice and smooth because mm -hmm. their, their appearance generally is going to be that way. They want these feathers to be in order, so they're very careful to preen these. And the barbs are, like, um, really organized as opposed to these feathers that you have here, which are a bit more loose mm -hmm. and fluffy for insulation. They need their flight feathers to be organized with the barbs pretty tightly packed so they can fly, of course. Um, and then at the end of the feather, there is a, a bit more brown here. So I'm actually gonna use something dark, sort of got a, a slight reddish tint to it, this burnt umber, and just lightly put that in as a base. And I'm just going to go almost to the edge of that feather and leave a little bit of a line where it's lighter. And then the bars are actually kind of brownish too. For these bars, I'm going to use Van Dyke Brown, which is kind of a neutral brown with a slight, almost reddish tone. And you can count the bars again. We've got about seven, and they line up pretty well with these bars here, you'll notice. And the ones that are more towards the end of the feather are more brownish, and then you can sort of switch over to gray once you get towards this area. So then, yeah, switch to, like, pretty dark gray on the area that's near here also you can add in near the trailing edge of that other feather, I mean. But then as you get further down the feather, you're going to want, like, a, a light warm gray. Or a medium warm gray, like a warm gray four. And finally, you can start smoothing out some of these areas a bit more. Just by adding more layers. And you know, generally, if you want to, if you want to smooth it out, it's nice to take a lighter color over the top. A 
like this warm gray too. And if you say, oh, that's lighter than I want it to be, just go over that layer again. And a general rule of thumb for layering, you know, when you're using colored pencil, is if you have smooth paper, like this smooth bristle paper, it's not going to be able to take as many layers because the tooth of the paper is what makes it so that you can add more layers on. Just the fact that there's teeny tiny like divots in the paper that like holds the color and allows you to add more layers on. And smooth paper, of course, does have a little bit of that, but not very much. So you can't use a lot of layers. But the advantage is you don't have to like deal with the white spot showing through. But if you're using something that's a rougher paper or like pastel mat, you're gonna have to use a lot more layers. But the advantage of that is that in, in some respects, you can get a certain kind of detail where the layers work together to create detail. Whereas when you're using this, you kind of have to focus more on like putting in the details as you go rather than having the layers work together almost like a puzzle. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> I'm sorry if it doesn't. But yeah, if you ever need a clarification on how I word things, just let me know. <laughs> but yeah, having the contrast between like this part and then the feather overlapping it is what will make it look more three dimensional, you know, as you go. It's nice to see that coming together. So try to be careful, you know, when you're working on this feather that you don't accidentally shade into the next feather because if you do that you'll lose that effect where it looks like an overlap is going on i like to imagine when i have like for example this overlap here think about it as pretend like you're shading a feather that's actually underneath that next one and i think just having that in your mind will impact the way you're shading to make it look more 3D. It's at least how it works for me. I'm like a really visual learner, so it helps me. Also with things like, for example, you know, when you're shading down here and you want to show this sort of armpit shadow, don't be afraid to use enough pressure that you're going to show that there's a shadow going on here. That can be a tricky thing with colored pencil because I know it's hard to erase, so you may say, oh, I don't want to make it too dark. And the way to, to you know, push yourself to do that, to show that contrast going on, is you can just keep gradually adding light layers. You know, if you're using light pressure, you really can get a lot of layers on your paper. So if you keep gradually adding light layers, basically the light layers are going to kind of show the subtleties of the color a little bit better than if you just immediately start using hard pressure. And if, if you go lightly, you know, it's going to be easier to erase as you start out. So if you say, oh, actually, I wanted to use this color, then you can take it back and fix that up. So let's now move into some of the secondaries. And I'm going to switch it up from what I normally do because we're going out of order. And I'm just going to start here with some of these and then work up this way. Um, because I want to talk about, again, showing that perspective with some of these darker areas compared to the tail and the body here. You want to have quite a bit of contrast going on. So for this one here, again, you can mix 
like a warm gray two with a cold gray three. And if you have a, a whole swath of feathers here that looks similar, it's good to remember what you're doing for layering. If you need to, you can even write it down. So if you get up and do something else for a while, um, or you're done drawing for the day and you come back to it later, um, you don't forget which grays you used, because that can be an easy thing to, to forget if you don't make a special note. Um, and then, yeah, you can go over the top one more time with the warm gray. And this feather actually disappears behind the tail. I need to lengthen some of these a bit more, actually. So we're not going to see the end of that feather. We're just going to see where it disappears behind the tail. And with these secondaries, often you have more blunt ends compared to the primaries, especially the outer primaries, which are very pointed. You do have a little bit of a point on these, but compared to the primaries up here, they're definitely more rounded, these secondaries. And you can use like a warm gray five. So you've got some shadows here and put these bands. And then you want to say, okay, there's quite a shadow, so let's up this contrast and use like warm gray six. But don't use too much pressure because you want to show these bands through here, which you can emphasize a little with the warm gray six. Again, you can just kind of go over it a bunch of times and it will start to get darker. So with, with kind of light pressure. And think about, okay, that feather is going to be behind the tail. I always think it's really fun doing things like this because as it comes together and it starts to look more 3D, that's like where the realism happens, at least as far as the light and shadow goes. That contrast is a really important part of your drawing. Um... Light and shadow, yes, and, you know, second only, I guess, to, to the proportions and overall shape. And then markings are important, too, of course. But if you're doing just a quick gestural drawing or something out in the field, maybe you're not going to get in all of these markings. We have the time to focus on it now, doing, like, more of a studio drawing. But if you're out in the field, you might want to just draw the things that are most important to you and just sketch them in a lot more quickly. So yeah, once you get out here, you start to get feathers where you can see a little bit better. Um, this one actually also... long. Um, I may make some adjustments a little bit later too with, or you know, maybe not because, you know, if you look at the photo, this one disappears behind the tail too, but I don't want to make it that long or it's going to mess up the shape. We can also just say, you know, this bird didn't have his tail fanned out as much as he does in the photo. It's just a slight difference. 
Your drawing doesn't have to be exactly the same as the photo. So, yeah, in most of these feathers, you can see the shaft of the feather is very close to this next feather here. But mostly you have that trailing edge showing. And then we have the subterminal band, which is pretty thin. Cold gray six here. And just look at your your photo, if you have it out, you can mix the warm grays and the cold grays a little. <laughs> Going in the direction of the barbs. And some of these bars have a little bit of an almost U shape to them, so pay attention to that. You'll see I'm switching back and forth. I'm mostly using for the bars cold gray 6 and warm gray 5. And then you have this little area at the end that you can shade in lightly with warm gray 5, or maybe even one that's a little bit lighter, like warm gray 4. And try to mostly line up these bars. With the feather, the neighboring feather there. And then of course you're gonna use lighter warm and cool grays for this area. And remember that you've got some, some feathers here that you may want to lightly sketch in some of those outlines a little more just so you don't lose that. Yeah, you know, you just keep keep going along like this. Remember the sh the slight shadow that you may have here. And then, you know, if you say, oh, I want to make sure I get this highlight and maybe I accidentally drew over it, you can take an eraser. Need some batteries. Um, just erase that. If you erase too much, you can come in a little bit more with this pencil, darken it up. Get that contrast back in there. So then you have that little light highlight along the edge of the feather. Hopefully that's showing up at least a little bit here. On your screen. It's a nice thing to be able to show. I'll just do one more here.
And if you have, um, you know, times when you're trying to really smooth out layers, remember to come back in and, and get that contrast back if you start to lose it by putting a light layer over the top. Because, like, especially if you're using a white pencil or a really light gray, you might start to get a washed-out appearance. Unless you go over that layer again to get your shadow back in. Alright, I think that about covers it. The other wing looks pretty similar. So the rest of the feathers, you know, you can work on on your own time to finish this red tail up. Zoom out. Um, you know, some of the feathers, remember, are going to be a little more upturned or outturned here. Because the wing is swept forward a little bit. But you have a similar kind of shading going on. And yeah, remember, with a few of the feathers, you might be able to see the shadow of the one underneath as they're overlapping. Especially with your outer ones there. And that's because you've got more light coming through here. These feathers aren't overlapping as much. They're a little bit more slightly spread apart. But yeah, that's drawing a red tail in flight. I hope people enjoyed it. If you think of any questions that come up as you're finishing up your red tails, please let me know. And I will be doing another series coming up. Um, probably in two weeks I'll start the next one. So keep an eye on my page and I'll put an event notice up. I have to take a look at our old survey and figure out what people wanted. Um, I'm going by ranking. I think rabbit might be the next one. As far as like what got the most votes. Um, for what we're going to draw. So yeah, I'll let you guys know. Um, one more thing I did want to show you. Since we're talking so much about flight feathers, I guess. Um, so a new thing, let me zoom out. Oh, that's the most it zooms out. So I have been trying, yeah, that's fine, scratch board, thanks to my friend Lindsay giving an amazing class. You should look up her work, um, Lindsay Nielsen scratch board. It's really incredible. And she gave this great class, so I've started using scratch board. So just a suggestion, if you really like colored pencil, you might want to give this medium a try um, because it involves a lot of texture, just like colored pencil. So this is um, museum quality scratch board that I got on Blix Art Supplies. And then you can, you can get scratch board knives or X-Acto knives to use. And it's really a lot of fun. This is the first time I've tried it, um, but I'm definitely going to keep practicing. And I have a feeling that a lot of people would agree, so I just wanted to show you that, um, since it's a pretty similar kind of medium to colored pencil and that you use a lot of texture. And, you know, it depends how much pressure you use, of course, um, if you use more pressure, you're going to get wider lines and more light going on. Um, so it is backwards, of course. So you're drawing the highlights. And that is something that's going to be weird trying to get used to, but it's a super fun challenge. Thank you so much, everybody, for coming along. Um, I think maybe we only had a couple people watching live this evening, but hopefully a few others will watch it later. Um, I hope everybody has a nice holidays. Stay safe out there and healthy. Um, and I hope you find ways to connect with your family and friends in a safe way. 
Um, all right. Thanks, everybody. Bye.